subscribe now and press the bell icon never miss an update hello good morning dear students you please recollect last time we have discussed refraction at a single spherical surface and this was applied on to the derivation of a very important result namely the derivation of lens makers formula now today we shall continue our discussion on lenses lens is any transparent medium bounded by two spherical surfaces spherical surface having center of curvature here spherical surface having center of curvature here now this is optical medium the boundary of which is two spherical surfaces you can also have spherical surface like this like this in between the two spherical surfaces you can have an optical medium the center of curvature for this surface for the other surface like this so broadly these are two this is a, these are two lenses now we are <coughs> the concept of say principal axis principal axis see you have one center of curvature here another center of curvature here the straight line passing through this the straight line passing through this is principal axis is the straight line passing through the centers of curvature of the spherical surfaces from which the lens is bound now let us see how this lens behaves towards <coughs> light now remember if you have a spherical surface like this let us say center curvature c1 principal axis now if you have let us say say a point object on the axis a ray along the axis falls here normally falls here normally goes in the same direction any other ray see instead of going like this this is spherical surface having center curvature here therefore this is the normal now light is going from rarer to denser medium doesn't go in the same direction therefore it deviates towards the normal so there is deviation here now there is change of medium again it changes the direction denser to rarer deviates away from the normal now please note now this is a narrow convergent peak i mean divergent peak after passing through this lens it has become convergent now that is how this acts now similarly if you have another lens like this see center curvature let us say center curvature of the two surfaces a point object a ray along the axis travels in the same direction another ray see you have the normal 
doesn't go in the same direction, going from rarer to denser medium. Therefore, it deviates towards the normal, deviates towards the normal. Again, change of medium, normal. Now, denser to rarer deviates away from the normal. Note that these are two incident rays. After passing through the lens, they have become like this. Notice the same divergent beam further diverges. So, the action of the lens is for the incident beam of light, this converges, for the incident beam of light, it diverges. So, that is what we have here. So, on based on that, <coughs> you have types of lenses. <coughs> lenses may be converging or diverging. Converging or diverging. See, you have here double convex lens, double concave lens. Now, this converges the light, diverges the light. Now, plano convex lens, plano concave lens. Now, convex meniscus, concave meniscus. Notice that in these three, that is converging lenses, the central part is thicker than the edges, thicker than the edges. Now here in these lenses, the central part is thinner than the edges. But see you have here axis C1, C2, axis C1, C2 at infinity. Now here please note C1 is here, C2 is there. So it goes on like that. But for all of them, for all of them, if you have light going like this, this converges. If light goes like this, falls on this sense, it converges like this. Now here, the same thing. So in all these cases, the light is converged, whatever be the incident beam. So converging lenses. Now here, the same thing happens, the light diverges, the light diverges, like this, the light diverges. So you have diverging lenses, different types, converging lenses, different types. Now with this, we go on to the concept of principal focus. Now, if you have, let's suppose, a double convex lens, see, parallel beam of light, parallel beam of light, traveling parallel to the axis and close to the axis. This is a parallel beam, traveling parallel to the axis, close to the axis. Now, you have concave lens, similarly, parallel beam. narrow parallel beam traveling parallel to the axis and close to the axis. Now this refracts like that, refracts like that. Now here it is found that all rays after refraction, after refraction, they pass through a particular point on the axis called focus. Now here all rays after refraction diverge as in that case. See, diverge like this, diverge like this. Observe the beam diverges after coming out of the lens. Now if you produce all these rays back, all of them appear to come from a point. This is focus, that is focus. Now this is a fixed point, it is a real point, 
because light converges. Now this is a virtual point. Now also note, <coughs> see if light, you have light here like this, let's suppose. If light comes like this, now you have focus like this. For the same lens, you have light going like this, let's suppose. You have focus here. So you have focal point, focal point, one on either side, at equal distance from the center. Now then, <coughs> you have the concept of optic center. Optic center. Now recollect, <coughs> see, what we have learned earlier, a parallel beam, I mean a parallel sided glass slab, a ray incident on one face does not go like this, it deviates like this, deviates like this. This is what we have seen. In the case of a parallel sided glass slab, light incident comes out in the same direction. Now sir, you have a lens, let us say a double convex lens, notice that this part, this part can be regarded as a parallel sided glass slab. So that, see if you have center curvature here, the center curvature here for the two second surfaces, spherical surfaces, principal axis. A ray of light, observe, I am writing this figure. See, it deviates, deviates such that, see, it comes out parallel to itself, like this. So, if the incident ray and the emergent ray See, are parallel, the refracted ray intersects the axis at a point that is called the optic center. If the lens is thin, if the lens is thin, then we have, see, thin lens means, see, this thickness is very small compared to the radius of curvature. See, we have the axis. If the optic center is like that, a ray passing through optic center, this is optic center, a ray passing through optic center, see this shift is small because of thickness, now, this is optic center. In other words, optic center is a point on the axis, point on the axis. of the lens, inside the lens, such that a ray through it does not deviate, does not deviate. So that is what we have for the optic center. Now we have two points here. See for a given lens, convex lens or concave lens, principal axis, a ray passing through, traveling parallel to the axis, now comes out of the lens such that it passes through the focus. Then a ray passing through the optic center, let us say like this. You have light coming like this, let us suppose. Now it goes undeviated like that. But now this is a fixed point, this is a fixed point. Now that is the focal length. So you have the focal length.
यब ऑफ ए लेंस इज द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन द ऑप्टिक सेंटर एंड इट्स प्रिंसिपल फोकस दट इज यफ इज डिस्टेंस ओ एफ ओ एफ नो नोट दैट सी फॉर द कॉन्वेक्स लेंस सी दिस इज यफ दिस इज ऑप्टिक सेंटर सो दिस डिस्टेंस अकॉर्डिंग टू अ साइन कन्वेंशन वी बेस आर लाइक दिस देर फॉर दिस इज पॉजिटिव यफ नो फॉर द कॉन्क्यो लेंस see a ray parallel to the axis goes like this as if it comes from f this is optic center we measure in the opposite direction to the direction of the incident light therefore this is minus f minus f so these are <coughs> two points that you have to remember that is a ray traveling parallel to the axis after refraction passes through f or appears to come from f and then a ray passing through optic center goes undeviated well <clears throat> now we will consider say how the image of an object extended object is formed in lenses now we must be knowing the drawing of these figures now we remember two points one a ray passing through traveling parallel to the axis and passing through the lens after refraction passes through the focus on the other side another ray passing through optic center goes undeviated see we take any two rays from the object and see where they meet so that gives the image for example Now, if the object is at a very great distance, infinite distance, uh, placed at right angles, let's suppose, the rays from the uh, topmost point they are convergent, traveling a long distance, they become parallel. By the time they reach the lens, they will converge at a point just below the principal focus in the so-called focal plane. The image here, as you can see. it is inverted it is real and it is diminished in size i move the object towards the lens let us say the object is beyond 2f and a ray parallel to the axis passes through f another ray through optic center goes straight the two rays meet here and the image is See between f and two f, the image is between f and two f. It is real, inverted, and diminished. So here, if we keep the object, if we keep the object at a distance equal to the focal length, twice the focal length, that is at two f. The ray parallel to the axis passes through f. Another ray passing through optic center goes straight. They intersect. the image is formed exactly at 2f that is at equal distance from the lens the image is real inverted and same size it is same size earlier it was smaller in size now i move the object we toward the lens again i keep it between f and 2f the image is formed beyond 2f as you can see image is beyond 2f it is real it is inverted and enlarged enlarged now i move the object again further towards the lens and keep at the focus ray parallel to the axis passes through f through optic center go straight they emerge out in parallel 
we know that they do not meet or they meet at infinity so the image is at infinity at infinity note that in the first case if the object is at infinity the image is at f here if the object is at f the image is at infinity they seem to be complemented now finally if i move the object towards the lens again and bring within f now the refracted rays after passing through the lens do not meet on the other side they meet when produced backwards that means the image is virtual for the first time virtual for the first time it is erect and it is enlarged enlarged then in the case of concave lens keep the object on the axis now again take a ray parallel to the axis it diverges as if it comes from f another ray through optic center goes undeviated the two rays when produced back meet at here so the image is once again virtual to the same side and erect diminished wherever you keep the object now this is what we have here now in all these figures not one point point 1 the real image is always inverted in all these cases virtual image whether it is convex lens or concave lens are formed to the same side of the lens look at this object image to the same side object image to the same side and it is erect virtual images are always erect real images are always inverted now in these figures we have kept the object at some arbitrary distance for every of the of that distance there is one and only image position now what is the relation between the object distance and the image distance we will try to derive this formula say making use of any one of these figures you can in fact you can in fact use any of these figures <coughs> we'll take the simpler case of the convex lens now you will obtain the relationship between the object distance and the image distance in the case of a lens either convex lens or concave lens in terms of its focal length now <coughs> one over v 1 over u is 1 over f now making use of any one of those figures as i have told you now i'll take a convex lens thin lens thin lens means though i have written considerably thick lens say the size of this thickness is very small compared to the focal length now principal axis principal focus i keep an extended object ab at right angles to the object i mean principal axis a ray passing through optic center goes undeviated a ray traveling parallel to the axis goes through f <clears throat> well optic center focus object ab at right angles like this ray through optic center goes undeviated a ray parallel to the axis goes through f 
intersect here. This is the image of the point B. I draw a perpendicular. So I m is the image. Image of the object A B. <coughs> this is the lens. Let us say I draw C O perpendicular like this. Now with reference to the figure I m is the image of an object A B formed in a convex lens, a thin convex lens. of focal length f as shown in the figure. I will left out the details, you can complete that, see like that. Now observe, I draw C O is drawn perpendicular to the axis. Now observe, you have several triangles here, triangle formed by the object at the optic center, optic center is a fixed point, you can keep the object here, you can keep the object here, you can keep the object anywhere, now that object forms a triangle here. Then you have the image I m, now that also forms a triangle here. Now look at that, see this is right angle. This is right angle, vertically opposite angle, vertically opposite angles, therefore the remaining angles must be equal. So here we have triangle AOB is similar to the triangle IOM. Now therefore, the ratio of the sizes, say sides, side AB corresponding side, that means sides opposite equal angles, IM is equal to AO corresponding side opposite to the equal angles, Y, we will call this equation 1. Again. See this triangle, triangle formed by the object placed at this point with the focus, a fixed point, triangle formed by the image at the focal point. Again triangle C O F is similar to the triangle M I F, M I O I am sorry, C O F, M I F. Now therefore, sides opposite to equal angles, these are equal angles, you have equal angle here, equal angle here, say you have this angle is equal, this angle is equal like this, that is C O by C O by M I is equal to O F by I F. I will call this equation 2. Now observe C O is A B since C O is A B I can write this as A B by I M like that. So if you compare these two equations you have the light right hand side C is equal, therefore the left hand sides must be equal. So from equations 1 and 2 we get <coughs> AO or 
โอเยไปไหวโอเยไปไหวดัชีคุณตัวโอเอฟไปไอเอฟนั่นลูกค้าดีฟิการ์ดิสไอเอฟคันบีรีดนัสดัชีคุณตัวดัชกิวส์ไรส์ตัวโอเยไปโอไอโอเอฟฟรอมดีฟิการ์ไอเอฟอีส์โอไอมายนัสโอเอฟไอลคอลดิสอีควัชชั่นทรี Now notice, <coughs> I have expressed the quantities starting from O. O is the optic center. A is the object distance. O, A gives the object distance, image distance. Distance is the focus, focal length. Since O A is distance is the object measured in the opposite direction. <coughs> See. This is O A. We measure in the opposite direction. Therefore, it is minus U. Now this is O I. Image distance measured in the same direction plus V. Now this is focal length plus F. So I have O A plus U. O I. It is minus u. It is plus v, and O f is plus f. Substitute. Therefore, it is minus u divided by y. That is plus v plus f plus v minus of plus f. I'll cross multiply and simplify. So it is minus u plus v, minus u v, minus u and minus f, plus u f. That is equal to plus v f. Now rearranging the terms. Now I'll transpose this to the left side, right side. This to the left side. So you have U F minus V F. That's equal to U V. Dividing throughout by U V F, we get U F over U V F, one over V. V F over U V F minus one over U. That's equal to C one over F. Now this is what is called lens formula. Lens formula, relationship between object distance and image distance, in terms of a constant focal length. Now we have another concept. If you look back <coughs> to those figures, object, image at different position, the image size goes on changing, though the object size remains the same. We have the concept of magnification. Which is defined as the ratio of the image size to the object size. That is M is Image size is I M. Object size A B. Like that. Now this is definition. Sign convention positive, negative. So I M is this gives you I M if you apply sign convention minus I M plus A B. Now look at this equation. Look at that equation. If you take <coughs> the reciprocal of that, from equation one, 
This is our equation one that we have derived. See, we have this equation. You can take the reciprocal I m over A b. That is equal to y divided by A o. <coughs> so, here this gives the magnification I m over A b. But I m over A b is minus m. Look at this. And O i O i is plus V. O a is minus U. Now therefore, substituting here, we get minus M. This is minus M here. This is V over minus U. Therefore, magnification is V over U. This is definition, this is expression.